So, your pants and is coming up. You're a little worried. You've heard what your friends have said about how much you have to know. Here's some tips that'll help you get through that test. The pants and pantry is broken down into a blueprint, which consists of the following organ systems. Now, they've given us two things to go by. The first thing is they've weighted things. In other words, 16% of your exam is going to be cardiology, whereas 10% will be musculoskeletal. This helps you break down what's most important to study first. In addition, they've given us blueprints, specifically what's going to be in cardiovascular or what will you have to know about psychiatric and behavioral. And finding a, an exam review or a study tool that covers every single blueprint topic is important because you never know what's going to come your way. Now the pants or pantry consists of a lot of questions, so but not that many for the amount of information that's coming towards you. Your pants will be 300 questions and you'll sit down to five sections of 60 questions each. They'll be timed and you'll have to finish them in 60 minutes or one minute per question. If you're doing your pantry, you're going to do four sections of 60 and that'll still be one question per minute but it'll be 240 questions. Now the biggest difference between the pants and pantry, they really cover pretty much the same information but you'll see in a pants test a little more basic physiology, maybe some physical exam things that you're not going to find in your pantry. Other than that, they're pretty much the same test. The biggest thing and the biggest challenge for you now is how do you study, well, all of medicine enough so that in only 300 questions or maybe only 240 questions, you've got a broad enough base so you can hit most of the subjects that come your way. And your strategy needs to be this. You need to strategize to know 80% of 80%. So let's say you spent a lot of time studying on cardiology and you became an expert in cardiology, but that's only 16% of the test. And you forgot to study or ran out of time before you could study for all your other, let's say hematology and pulmonary and derm. And those were questions you got, obviously on your exam, as the percentage showed well then you wouldn't do well. So you need to strategize and triage yourself and find out where you are. And then you need to use a focus study tool or focus study habit in order to make sure that when you're studying for the time that you have, you're studying only what you need to study. You don't want to restudy what you already knew 90% of. You better spend the time studying on what you know, let's say 30% of pulmonary but 90% of cardio will then study pulmonary. So this is very important that you have this kind of strategy to use your time wisely in order to get a broad-based knowledge to pass. Now, one of the biggest warnings we always tell our uh, attendees and graduates uh, and our online members is, this is not a clinical test. This is not a clinical test. And it's really important for two things. Now, for you guys who are taking your pantry, I'm telling you this is important because the test is a little behind the times. So if there is a guideline that you're using in your everyday practice and it came out six months ago and that's how you're now practicing for standard of care, let's say for diabetes, it's not going to be on the test. So don't let that trip you up. Uh, in addition, uh, this test is going to be based a lot on guidelines, things that the test writers can really, you know, sink their teeth in, something that they can stand upon and say, this is what the guideline says, you can't tell me I'm wrong on my answer. But most of us practice differently in clinical practice. And so what you do may not be what the guideline is, maybe for better for your patient, but for the test, you've got to stick with those type of guidelines. Now, for those of you who are going to be pants takers, remember, just because your preceptor showed you a certain way in which we do medicine, which again is probably a very good way of practicing medicine, it may or may not be on the test, depending on what the actual guidelines are and the fact that the test tends to be three to five years behind the times. So very important that we're very careful not to take our clinical mind into this test and we need to have that kind of strategy in front of us and also to make sure we don't trip up. Now our uh, Help Pants Pan Re Medical Review Editor is Dr. Morton Diamond and he, he sat in the test writing committee for quite a few years. He's written thousands of actual Pants and Pan Re questions and he's well uh, versed in exactly how to write these questions, how they write the questions and the strategies we need to use to properly prepare for this test. Uh, he's written two widely known uh, board review books uh, and uh, we're excited to have him on our team. These are some of his tips that he gave us to give to you for your success going into this test. And the first one is this, there's no clear relationship between the clinical frequency of a disease in practice and the number of exam questions you might see in that disease state. 
Uh, and what does this mean? It means that some zebras actually might be more prevalent on a test than they might be in clinical practice. And the reason is this. Again, it's very difficult for them to write a question, let's say, on congestive heart failure or even COPD. There's multiple presentations, um, and a lot of time the presentation might be the same as another disease state. Uh, they want something that's pretty concrete that they're going to give you a question so that the answer can't be challenged very easily because that's the answer. So, for example, in the example the Dr. Diamond's given here, uh, COPD versus SLE and sarcoidosis. Now, sarcoidosis is not seen very often. It's a common disease, but it's not very common, especially compared to COPD or, let's say, congestive heart failure. But sarcoidosis has some very specific symptoms, for example, perihilar lymphadenopathy on a chest film, etc. So because it has specific things, they like to use some of those uh, as test questions. And again, the frequency of these type of disease states is going to be more on the test than it would be in clinical disease. So again, or clinical practice. So when we're talking about what you're going to use to prepare yourself for this exam, make sure you've got something that's pointing out to you what zebras are important to study versus what zebras might be a total waste of your study time because they're truly zebras both on the test and also actus. Now, tip number two, he said, well, when a question starts, medicine X, therapy is initiated. Well, obviously, most likely that question is dealing with the medication. And there's a lot of talk uh, on medication in, in the test. Um, it might be interaction. It sure might be side effect. Um, it may be a secondary or tertiary side effect for that matter. Um, but the point is, when you see a question and it says, for example, lithium therapy is initiated, well, then the first thing you should stop and ask yourself is, okay, what were the things that I needed to know about this specific medication? In this case, you know, avoiding pregnancy or making sure you follow your thyroid function and your renal function, uh, maybe the fact that hydrochlorothiazide raises lithium levels, okay? Uh, another thing off uh, would be hydrochlorothiazide, for example, if there was a question on that, well, you need to know it increases uric acid levels and, of course, it causes hypokalemia, among other other things. Um, uh, so again, we need to be very focused at whatever we're, we're using to prepare for this exam, that it's not only giving us medications, uh, but it's also giving us the specific things about those medications that we're going to need to know for the test, because you can't know um, all of uh, the medications that are out there. You've got to know the specific things. Now, tip number three, a pop popular question structure in the pants pantry is the presence of which of the following differentiates. And this is very important. So they love to give you these questions where you've got, of course, five potential uh, answers and four are distractors and one is the answer. And four of the distractors are common to the disease state they're talking about there, but not specifically to the question they asked. So in this case, the presence of which of the following differentiates hyperthyroidism in graves versus hyperthyroidism caused by toxic, toxic thyroid nodule. Uh, so what would be the difference? Well, these are very difficult distractors, but often this is the way the test uh, will be. So high cardiac output failure could be a distractor, but both graves and toxic thyroid nodule cause this. Atrial fibrillation, again, both cause it. So it, it happens in hyperthyroidism, but it happens in both. Lid lag happens in both. Increased systemic vascular resistance happens in both, but it's only the presence of antibodies to thyroid stimulating hormone uh, that, ha that occurs in Graves, but does not occur in toxic thyroid nodules. So again, we need to make sure that when we're studying, we're, we're looking for a, a, you know, a, a study guide or a way in which to take disease processes which are very similar and, and point out, point out what are those very important specific differences that probably will key us into getting the answer right. Uh, it's the contrast and compare of similar subjects that is so important uh, in your study habits. Tip number four, don't be fooled by the statement that the pants panty only consists of 3% ID. Now, when I first showed you the blueprint, yeah, the blueprint says 3% ID. And the infectious disease processes um, that are in the infectious disease blueprint are 3% numerically, but those are really the infectious disease, uh, uh, disease states that didn't fit someplace else, so to speak. So, for example, pneumonia is not in the infectious disease blueprint. It's in, in under pulmonary. And meningitis is not in the infectious disease blueprint. It's in neurology. Otitis media is not on the infectious disease blueprint. It's in ENT. So, 
there are multiple, multiple infectious diseases strewn throughout this entire blueprint when you go through each one. So remember, infectious disease, you've got to be up on in multiple ways. And again, you want a system in place when you study so that you're looking at all the infectious disease processes and everything you need to know about those. Uh, we definitely thank Dr. Diamond for his contribution to the Health Pants Panel Review, by all means, and also for helping us uh, spread this information to you so that hopefully you can take it on to pan success. Now, some of the other uh, tips that we've come across from our experience uh, dealing with the pants and panry are uh, there's a lot of common terms in medicine that we use all the time. And for example, moon face, uh, when we're talking about a cushionoid syndrome, uh, it's been used for years, and we all are used to hearing moon face buffalo, buffalo hump abdominal striae. We're used to that. And what we've seen over the last few years in the test is that they're starting to get away from using these common terms that we all you know, are used to and going to describing the term. So instead of saying moon face, it may say you have a patient with a rounded facey or a full facey. So be careful when you're reading the question to look at it. And if you see something that's describing it, stop and think, well, what could that relate to? Oh, full faced, um, then and a fat pad uh, on on uh, you know their upper back. Oh, that could be moon face and buffalo hump. Put those together. Uh, another example would be when describing uh, you know WPW. There's what's called a delta wave in the beginning of the QRS and they might say a slurring or an upsloping or a ski sloping of the QRS instead of saying delta wave. So be careful there and just keep, keep that in mind. Uh, we again always use these terms and continue to use these terms as we should when we talk to each other and the way we describe disease but be careful on the exam because they may uh, give you another description. This is really important, uh, especially on this test. Two things. First of all, with uh, with medications, as I'm sure you're familiar, and if not, I'm, I'm going to tell you now, <laughs> you got to know your generics. you got to know your generics. There uh, probably will be few, if any, trade names, but the generics will always be there. Uh, and the reason why they do this is because there's so many different trade names now for drugs, but there's only one generic. Uh, so know your generics, number one. Number two. Um, you got to know the less popular guys. So poor chlorothaladone is sitting in the corner and nobody loves him, but everybody loves hydrochlorothiazide. And so, for example, in a question about a thiazide diuretic on the pants or panry, and let's say they were going to ask you a secondary side effect, it's very likely that they will ask or use the drug chlorothaladone instead of hydrochlorothiazide. Another example of this is that they may use, may use bumetatide instead of furosemide. So most of us are familiar with furosemide, but they may, use, they may use bumetatide. So definitely know which drugs are in a class that may be up for grabs, if you will. And again, you want to be using a study guide or study material that's pointing out to you, okay, you know, in this case, I really need you to know this secondary or tertiary or less known, less popular drug in this class because it's something we think is going to be uh, possibly on your test. This is important too. Uh, so there's certain bad boys. There's certain bad boys when we talk about medications. And you know, lithium and amiodarone are definitely a pair of bad boys. Uh, these are drugs that just have a significant amount of either drug-to-drug -drug interaction, side effects, uh, contraindications, and precautions. And um, so, for example, amiodarone, you know, causes pulmonary fibrosis, you need pulmonary function tests before you give it. It can cause infiltrative liver disease, you need to get LFTs before you give it, uh, you know, etc. You know, lithium we talked about earlier with all of the different things. Both amiodarone and lithium can cause hyper and hypothyroidism. Now, the bad boys may or may not be the popular guys. So, for example, amiodarone right now is an extremely popular drug, but lithium is really falling out of favor, and we don't see it used very much clinically. That being said, it's definitely up for grabs on this test because it is so many different ways in which you need to either counsel a patient, drug interaction, you know, side effect, etc. that you need to know about that. So know the bad boys and again use a study guide that's going to point out for you specifically which drugs are the bad boys for you because again you can't go through the PDR know every single drug. You want to have somebody who's helping you to make those determinations. So we hope that you like our, our tips here. We hope this helps you to pass your pants or pantry, no matter what you use to prepare. 
Uh, we do offer a, a complete pants panda review online. Uh, we do have live courses too. Uh, we review the entire blueprint. Uh, we review every single topic. It's broken down by contrast and compare topics to make sure we can get you what you need. We have a very specific uh, remind, review, reaffirm learning system that's extremely proven. We have a, over 98.7% pass rate and well over 1,000 graduates in the last uh, 15 months alone. Uh, and we would love to have you try out our product. Uh, if you'd like to go to helpdemo.com, you can try 10% of our product for free. And if you want to like us on Facebook, uh, which is uh, forward slash help course, uh, we're always putting uh, free tips out there for you guys, whether you buy our product or not. We'd love to be involved in your success uh, going forward uh, with your pants and pantry exam. So best in luck, no matter what you use, and uh, we hope this helps you a lot.